through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic. Hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 262. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today we're going to give you our DVD rundown for the week of June 11th. Weehaw! Yeehaw. Mm -hmm. This is a rundown, not a roundup. Oops. Get your, get your shit sorry. together. I'm sorry. I'm yes. sorry. I don't know why rundown always just... I, I end up thinking easy. Of Wild West. It's easy. It's one I like. But, you know, it's a pretty, pretty solid week in terms of content. Maybe not so much special features, yes. but you know, pretty solid content. I would agree. First one we're going to talk about is Oz the Great and Powerful. Yes. This is the Sam Raimi film starring James Franco, the mm -hmm. prequel to The Wizard Mila of Oz. Mila Kunis as well, right? Mila. Mila, is that yeah. what I said? Okay. Yeah. Mila Kunis. Rachel Weisz. Yes. I, was, uh, I wasn't going to screw that one up. I yeah. remembered that much. <laughs> but, you know, this is, yeah, the prequel to The the Wizard of Oz. Yes. Filmed in 3D. Mm -hmm. um, there is a 3D release option for really? it, but it's only 3D. Like, that's the only option. No other Blu-ray, DVD, or whatever. You can only see in 3D. And as so we saw uh, earlier today, certain things are fading out the 3D yes. already. Yes, in home like market. sports. Yes. ESPN. Ugh. But, you know, nevertheless, that's not the release we're going to talk yeah. about. We're going to talk about the Blu-ray, DVD, digital copy because version. Because we love variety. We love variety packs. Variety. I don't understand why they didn't just do the Blu-ray, all the other forums, but I digress. I digress. You can ask Walt Disney yeah. that question. Yes, <laughs> yes um, dig him up and yes. ask his corpse. Or you know... I enjoyed the movie. I thought it was pretty solidly fun. I mean, I thought it was not great. I never usually love prequels, yeah. but you know, it was it's still pretty fun and very visually beautiful. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's this is one of those things that's like why it was made is probably more problematic than the actual end result. Sure. The end result was not bad. Um, I think it's weird. I was wondering when I saw the film why there wasn't a lot of more tribute to the original, and mm. that's because Warner Brothers owns the rights to the iconic elements from the 1939 uh -huh. MGM film, including the ruby slippers. Uh, Disney was unable to use them or any other character likeness from that film. This is extended to the green of the Wicked Witch's skin, uh, for which Disney used that it's what its legal department considered a sufficiently different shade. Awesome. Uh, the studio could not, however, use the signature chin mole of Margaret Hamilton's portrayal of the Wicked Witch of the West. Like, they literally had to change the skin color, not use a mole, not use the ruby slippers. The Emerald City looks awesome. different. All these things because they didn't have the rights. That's funny. <laughs> you know, it, it's 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 a fun movie, but you know, it's kind of got an interesting release as well. Mm -hmm. You know, it's got all those formats. It's got additionally one of the things I thought was cool. It is, uh, it has the magic of Oz the Great and Powerful, the second screen experience, which is an immersive second screen experience of all things Oz through a special downloadable app, huh. which you can open up and it uh, sort of connects with the film and gives you deeper information about the magical world of Oz. It's kind of neat. Yeah, which I think is pretty like cool. pop-up I mean, video on your mobile device totally. kind of I, I feel like it very much is sort of like of the now technology, yes. which I think is a really neat idea, and yeah. I think more people should probably do that. Yeah. Um, there's additionally uh, My Journey in Oz by James Franco, a personal story produced and directed by James Franco about, you know, getting into that role. Um, there is an. You spent a lot of time learning magic. I think he's with like Dude, a. He's great. He's Lance good in the Burton. Movie. The, is that a magician? Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, he spent, he Vegas, spent yeah. like a while practicing with him to learn. He's some. like the notch below David Copperfield. So. I think he would be insulted here. <laughs> Just <kidding. Yeah. laughs> Well, I'm sure he's watching, so I'm sorry, yes. Lance. Sorry, yes. But Maybe he'll peer behind us and say, <laughs> that, no. That'd be awesome. <laughs> There's also an uh, interview with composer Danny Elfman, which yes. talks about his inspiration for the score, and I love Danny Elfman, yeah. so that's always This be movie was responsible for him and Sam Raimi getting back together after their fallout after Spider-Man 2. Very cool. Yeah, they were able to uh, like There's the also uh, Walt Disney and the Road to Oz, the discussion of the fascination with the land of Oz since he was a kid and how it grew into the inspiration and planning for their own adaptation of the books. Very cool. And then there's some weird stuff like Mariah Carey music video and bloopers, <laughs> which really I don't really give a shit about. I would but. rather Mariah Carey music video bloopers. Yeah, that would take that. You know, yeah, that would be because sure. that lady's crazy, yeah. and I can only assume the bloopers for her trying to do a music video must have been great. Yeah. <laughs> Moving right along, mm -hmm. we're going to venture into the realm of uh, serialized content, yes. and I say that specifically because we're talking House of Cards season mm -hmm. one. I would usually say TV season one, yes. but this is the Netflix original series mm -hmm. remake of the British series House yes, of Cards, based on a book. 
Yes, this time <laughs> produced and starring Kevin Spacey mm-hmm. and co-produced, some directed by David Fincher. Yes. So a very interesting product. Interesting too, because I know with like Arrest Development coming out, a lot of people were wondering, is it ever going to come out in DVD? And this clearly is showing that it is, yes. because House of Cards coming out on DVD. Well, so. that's sort of the interesting thing about, you know, it's a story about politics in mm-hmm. Washington. Very good series. Have you yes. watched oh, it? I, I very it. much yes. enjoy it. Yeah. Um, very sort of powerful, you know, it's exactly what you'd expect from a political drama, you know, mm-hmm. cut throats exactly stomping of like necks you know yeah. it's and, really and due to the kind of fourth wall breaking that goes yes, on it, it's, it, it the audience is kind of behind the scenes with kevin spacey's right, character and knowing his the, machinations yeah. Yeah. yeah which is cool yeah but it very much is keeping with the netflix experience though because okay. the, the the release is either on blu-ray or dvd okay okay fine no special features nah. at all nothing and that's one of the things that's sort of unfortunate about the Netflix original series, mm-hmm. is there's not really a heck of a lot of special content that's been coming with them. So, which if is they, sad. If, if they, I would love if Netflix could get into the, the special content Definitely. of the releases. That they would cl- be right. I mean, they clearly got the money behind when they're making these productions. Because I didn't realize this. When you watch a series, this might surprise you. Maybe it won't. Maybe you're so used to this. But uh, all the car scenes, green screened. Wow. Uh, production was based on a 300,000 square foot warehouse in the Fashion International District in Joppa, Maryland. Hmm. Uh, the set is actually part of an old Macy's distribution center, and all the driving scenes were performed in a green screen room, which served as a refrigeration as well. Uh, inside of the building had the following sets, the Oval House, the Underwood Home, upper and lower levels, the House of Congress, various state representatives' office, hmm. South Carolina governor's office, and various plush hotel suites. Wow. All inside this one building. That's cool. It's pretty impressive. That's that's the magic of cinema right there. Yep. And that's the thing is is then it's kind of cinema quality for a television yeah. or a television show. So, you know, <laughs> I mean, I very much enjoy the show. If you don't have Netflix, I would recommend yeah. checking it out. I wouldn't necessarily buy it given that lack of special features or I mean, yeah, other you could formats. pay eight bucks for a month and watch it and a whole bunch of yeah. other stuff and then just cancel if yeah. you really care. That's but, probably. you know, if you're a fan of Scarecrow and you do don't have Netflix. It's I'd true. say rent it yeah. here to do that. Or don't have internet somehow. Or don't How are you internet. watching this? Yeah. Magic. <laughs> and next up, we're going to delve into a realm of a kind of shadier release mm, this year, mm-hmm. and that is Hansel and Gretel, Witch Hunters. Yes. Uh, joining the long line of films like Abraham Lincoln, Vampire mm-hmm. Hunter, of rewriting fairy tales yes. with uh, sort of rewriting history with... This is special more, creatures. This is more fairy tale than history. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> yes. But, yes. but rewriting yes. traditional yes. stories yes. with yes. other things. Already like greenlit for a sequel? Wow. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, this, unlike Oz the Grand Powerful, though, was filmed in 3D but gets a full on release. So we have a Blu ray hmm. 3D, Blu ray DVD, digital copy, ultraviolet release. Nice. Five, five uh, tool release. Very cool. Um, in terms of special features, though, there's not a heck of a lot. There's reinventing Hansel and Gretel featurette, which talks about the film's origins, the plot, the casting, performances, etc. This is the Jeremy Renner and Gemma. Gemma Atherton. Gemma, yeah, yeah. okay. I don't um, remember how her name is. Yeah. Called. Also, there's one that looks at the witching hours, the takes a closer look at the plot before moving into the witch design hmm. um the, the unfortunate thing about buying the 3d combo pack is that um there is only the theatrical version on the 3d disc ah. so the, the other blu-ray disc has the unrated version but okay. the um so you're not getting that much if you're going for that huh yeah so that's unfortunate yeah so you know um it's it's got a few special features, but you know that's about that's, it. That's unfortunately, about it. Okay. yeah. So, uh, I mean, if you're a huge fan of the film for some reason, or you, I don't know, wanted to check out badly, I would suggest renting it again. Yeah. But I would not go out of my way to buy this for any stretch of a minute. <laughs> I yeah. assume you didn't like the film. Yeah, I wouldn't say I was a huge okay. fan. Okay. Yeah, I think that's fair to say. Uh, from people I know who did enjoy it, seems more guilty pleasure. It is definitely so I can, like I can if you that. if like you're not looking for quality, then it's fine. It'd be the kind of thing where it's like if you entered into Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter expecting a interesting historical treatise on Abraham Lincoln, you wouldn't yes. like it. But if you went in expecting Vampire Hunter, if you're you laying like on it. bed in bed looking for like something to watch on cable and you stumble upon it, it's probably fine. You could do worse, but you know I wouldn't go out I'll of my prob- way to I'll check, probably it. check it out. Finally, the last one we're going to talk about is another quality television series mm-hmm. this time, and that is The Newsroom. Yes. This time we're talking about, was it HBO yep. series? Aaron Sorkin. Aaron Sorkin, yes, starring Jeff Daniels, Emily Mortimer, Sam Watterson. Mm-hmm. Uh, about Sam Watterson. a news reporter who 
decides he wants to speak his mind yes. after years of sort of being a repressed yeah being kind of running the middle middle of the yeah. road politically he decides he's going to go after stories and not care about who it pisses off yes. politically yeah and sort of the ramifications both yes. for him and the network because of that interestingly done in a way that i i is both somewhat aggravating and really fascinating because they take real actual historical news stories, uh, news stories yeah. that have happened in the past and they kind of put them in the breaking as it's happening like the first episode is the horizon deep water horizon gulf oh the gulf oil yeah the bp BP oil spill so stuff like that they take real Mm -hmm. things and they make them like breaking at the moment and how the newsroom is trying to piece it together and what they're going to say about it what they know what they don't know it's interesting second season coming out soon yeah can't wait i very much enjoy the first one uh in terms of this you get the blu-ray db uh combo plus the digital copy hbo seems to really be doing a good job of that we did it with Mm -hmm. i think it was game of thrones and a few other things yeah and so i'm glad to see them doing it they got hbo going so it's like they already got digital copies of things why not it I, I mean, five it, bucks and yeah, put it in there it just makes me happy to see it so mm-hmm. that's a positive for you i agree uh in terms of special features there's a feature with aaron sorkin alan Poole, greg matola who i didn't even realize wow. was an ex- a co-executive producer uh jeff daniels yeah, emory mortimer right. sam waterston discussing their experiences shooting the first season neat um there's also audio commentaries on five episodes featuring uh, cast and crew, including Aaron Sorkin, Jeff Daniels, and Roy Mortimer, so they get the wow. the actual the, people who you want to hear uh-huh. from. Yeah, and then there's the big a, three, as it were. Yeah, exactly. And then there's you know inside the episodes and deleted scenes and stuff like that. So it's it's got some good features. Well done, there. HBO. Yeah. I wish more television shows did like HBO releases. Seriously, HBO really seems to get <coughs> Netflix. Of, yeah, <laughs> HBO really seems to get it. So that's that's pretty yeah. cool in my opinion. Yeah, but, I'm glad that they're uh, that they're willing to think about the home owner and not yeah. just the people who own HBO. HBO. Totally. <laughs> so that's our DVD rundown for this mm-hmm. week. Uh, join us later this week as we talk Seth Rogen in honor of This Is The End. Mm-hmm. You can't see it, but he's wearing a I know, I didn't right even now. think about you that, just... actually. That's <laughs> total, total <laughs> winky dink yeah. Um, and, you know, as always, you can find us MacGuffin. That's mm-hmm. MacGuff.in. Ooh, We're on Facebook.com slash Podcast, Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast. Uh, phone number, 323-761-988. Four two, uh, nice we're on, yeah, exactly. I kind of was uh, remembering as I was going there. Stalin. Yeah, it's been it's been a few days since we filmed that, so it took me a while. Uh, iTunes, Roku, Blip TV, mm-hmm. Miro. Check in and get glue. Get some badges, sticker badges. Give us some stars on iTunes and some thumbs on the YouTube. And some comments. We'll hit yeah. you back. And yeah. Comment on my varying facial hair degrees yeah. that change It's, every it's week. already a topic on mm-hmm. the YouTube. Yes, so it is. Continue the conversation. <laughs> we'll see you next time. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels all